Smiley Day Geeks, welcome back to the Geek Sider Show. I'm Josh. I'm Anna. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Critical Role Campaign 3, episode 20. 20? 20? 20. 20. Uh -huh. So if you haven't seen it yet and you want to avoid any spoilers, skip this video and come back later because everything we say from this point forward is going to be a spoiler. Wow, okay. So, <laughs> I first, this, this, this heist, this challenge... I really thought their opponents were going to be like a more competent group. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> like like the, 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 the pair that we keep seeing, the, the Goblin and the Katari, mm -hmm. which I guess is Matt's version of Tabaxi or mm -hmm. some version of Tabaxi, um, they're very much the Wet Bandits from Home Alone. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of morons. And, but that's fine. I thought maybe the rest of the, that group might be a little more capable. But no, so far, uh, Bell's Hells are just almost running circles around them. Well, and it's not to say they weren't capable, because they did go downstairs first. They just fucking died. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't... And these are supposed to be basically non-lethal traps. Yeah, I mean... I don't now, know. those marionettes. When he said non-lethal, <laughs> I kind of got the impression he was saying, like, <laughs> they're non-lethal. You think with a grain of salt kind yeah, of a thing? Yeah, like, I was like, oh, so they are. Yeah, okay, yeah. they're lethal. But yeah, I, I, I thought the uh, the opposing team would be uh, more capable, like, like basically ahead of him. Yeah. Bell's Hells pretty much the whole time, and they'd be yeah. playing catch-up. Is the way I, especially the way this thing started. Oh, yeah. Because getting through that window was an ordeal. <laughs> windows and doors, man. Windows and doors. Windows and Nothing doors. can derail a D&D session more than windows and doors. Yeah. Make your party unlock something. Unlucky dice, windows, <laughs> doors. That's that's like the... the, the and they the, kind of had all of that The unhappy this... triad of D&D. They had all of that this episode. Yeah. They had yeah. windows, they had doors, and they had real bad dice They rolls. really did. But what was crazy was the rolls... It was like feast or famine. Yeah. It was either really bad or really great. Yeah. Especially with the marionette fight. Like, at first, what Orem and Fern were the only two who didn't fail that save. Yeah. Oh, my God. And it took and Imogen then, forever oh my God, to did. get through Imogen it. Imogen had to do, like, five saves to save on that. But even so, like, after the first round, it was still, like, only, like, two people, I think, saved. Yeah. Um, so it was still, like, the, the majority of them. Yeah. Uh, Wild, wild. Um, so, so the, the, this museum, like the the, fir the first half of the episode, the museum felt more like like a guy who just like collects odds and ends, yeah, and is calling this a museum. But then the, the deeper you go, the crazier his stuff gets. Like he supposedly has a book from the guy who released the Betrayer Gods. It would not surprise me in the least to find out like all of the stuff in the basement levels are fakes or forgeries. With you maybe know, like one or two that are actual legit items. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of where I or am. They're, like, like I know they've done Detect Magic and they've done some other stuff to see that these things aren't like complete knockoffs. But like maybe they're mislabeled. And they're not exactly what he's portraying them to be. Like that mask. I doubt if that mask is what is on the plaque. As right. opposed to just some like plus one curse item. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the, uh, the the book though is the thing. Because like we had to look that guy up. Yeah. yeah. I, he... I recognized the name and I was like, ooh, that's bad. Why is that bad? Why do I know this? <laughs> and yeah. It's it's the guy who set loose the betrayer gods. Now that would be a tremendously valuable and rare item to have. Just out on a podium in your museum. Do you think that that's possibly legit? No. Like, like to, to me, if there's going to be one item in that museum that's legit, it's going to be that. <laughs> and the rest of it's bullshit. <laughs> it's going to be like the most potentially dangerous item they could possibly find. And, 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 and he thinks it's a fake. <laughs> right. He thinks, it's, he thinks it's a fake, but it, and he's playing it off as being real and it actually is real. That that would track. That would like, track. like this, this dude um, strikes me as the kind of guy who probably falls for a lot of ruses. Yeah. Like, he probably buys a lot of fake shit thinking it's real. Yeah. Like, oh, man, you're never going to believe what I just found at this 
flea market. And he pays through the nose for all of it. Yes. He's overpaid for like 99.9% .9 of his stock. Absolutely. Yeah. But the dude, he's, he's got money to burn, so it's yeah. okay. Yeah. And like, for the first half of this episode, I'm like, this is just this guy's shit. Yeah. That he's got a museum. Like, nobody goes to this museum. And then you get into like the cool stuff. Or the potentially cool yeah. stuff if it's real. Yeah, if it's real. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still, I, I, it's it's kind of funny how like each room has one item, which one I get because Matt has done a lot of research building this museum and making all of these things part of his campaign. Mm -hmm. um, to add more than one item in every single room would be a it's lot. A lot of shit. That's a lot <laughs> That's of lore lot of and shit. stuff you have to create for uh, it. So I understand that part. But it also kind of tracks with this guy's personality to mm -hmm. have like this big grandiose mu museum, but like there's just one item in every room. <laughs> it's like a bunch of wasted space. And, and what I'm really liking with this dungeon crawl is until the marionette fight, no no combat. Yeah. It's been all traps and puzzles. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, is that a gelatinous cube in that room? Or is it some I kind of ooze? it's a gelatinous cube. That was my first thought was, oh my God, it's a gelatinous cube. In fact, I did the onboard, it's a gelatinous cube. Because he, he did say engulf, and that's the gelatinous mm -hmm. cube ability. I, I've never done oozes in a D&D campaign, so I don't know if they have an engulf ability. It definitely, it seemed like a just massive gelatinous cube. Yeah. Well, and I assumed it was this big giant room that he fell in, but it wasn't. It was just 10 foot by 10 foot. It's oh, a, it so, was, okay. Yeah, it was just a Because I thought it was a really big room, too. Yeah, so did I. And I think um, Travis did, too, because there was something Travis said where um, Matt was like, no, 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 it's 10 foot by 10 foot. I missed that. Okay. Yeah. That's, so it was I, a small room. Because I, I thought it was like a fifty foot by fifty foot. Yeah, room. that's Because I, I remember thinking. Matt saying fifty feet, and I'm like, oh, that's a big fucking cube. <laughs> I think he fell fifty. Feet. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think he he fell. He went over a ledge. Oh, ledge. A ledge. <laughs> went over a ledge. <laughs> went over a ledge. <laughs> um, and then fell an additional fifty feet. Okay. I think that's where that 50 okay. came in and All then right. and i think i think me I, yeah I, I was thinking this big huge room but then he made a comment that no 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 it's just 10 by 10. so it could be a gelatinous cube absolutely um one thing matt did in this episode is something that he would not have done in a previous campaign period and that was uh fcg uh, was doing something yeah what the fuck was he doing? Um, he, he wanted to try and break Orem oh, free and yeah. then give himself guidance, in which are entangle. both actions. Yeah, in the entangle, he wanted to use the saw blade to let out Orem, and he was like, guidance! And he did it, and Matt was like, alright. And then he was like, do I have any bonus actions? He's like, well, technically, those were both actions, so we're just going to say your turn's over. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's definitely like last campaign. I don't think he would have done that. I think he would have been mm. like, uh, you can't guide yourself because you, you are using your saw blade. And another thing Matt, Matt did is... Um, because Fern and Orem both succeed on their wisdom saves in that marionette fight. Um, the, a couple of marionettes were going to target them. And they said, oh, wait, you saved. You're immune now. I'm going to target them. Like like me, I would have been like, oh, fuck. I just screwed up. Well, you're immune to it. They're, they don't know that. They're going to target you, and it just doesn't work. I, I, I would have nerfed myself on that one, I think. Yeah, But it makes sense that he's laxing the rules for the players he should also lax them for himself as well like it totally makes sense yeah if you're gonna let the, the player slide on something let yourself slide on something exactly i don't think i would let my, myself <laughs> slide on that one but then i i always kind of like err on the side of the players yeah yeah maps the oh, maps, the maps for were this great. were amazing yeah. and we ended on that cliffhanger with the two uh earth mud whatever golems golems yeah and the dot dot dots oh my god the dot dot the ellipses like, like the, the, this is a guy the, 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 the we're, we're terrible names apologies um the, this dude who owns this museum he uh he really thinks highly of himself and his stuff and he loves apparently a good story yes because because this museum kind of tells a story yeah it does kind of a little bit yeah, yeah. Um, there's a, speaking of the museum, there is a lot of interesting stuff. The thing that got me, um, is before they, when they come down the, um, stairs and before they enter like the museum proper, there are two sets of armors outside the door. And Matt said to Ashton, these would look familiar to you. Oh yeah. Um, and 
like either prior to that or after that, sometime around that same time, he had talked about the mask in the room and then also the armor. And it was um, armor. It was Hish Hishtari or Hish Hish Hishadri, something like Hishtari. I think it's Hishtari. Hishtari armor from the Hishtari village. And that village used to be a cult or like was previously a cult or the cult village uh, or the you know, cult village history or something like that. The, the, they were related in some way. And I'm like, why is this familiar to Ashton? And not only that, Ashton didn't know that it was familiar to, to them. Ashton asked about it and Matt said, yes, this would be familiar or, um, yes, actually Ashton would recognize these, recognize these. And I feel like, um, the way that Taliesin acted was that he didn't know that about Ashton. So mm -hmm. like, this is, new information and i'm just like it sounds like new information for talus yeah too. yeah it, it felt like new information i could be wrong um and that was just talison's face at that moment but it looked like it was new information for talison because that's the kind of thing that happens with a, with a player who has kind of an incomplete backstory and the dm's filling gaps for them I can't imagine Taliesin has an incomplete backstory. No, but if anybody can find a wiggle spot in a backstory, it's Matt. Well, that's absolutely <laughs> true, yeah. Yeah, no, Taliesin's uh, wiggle room backstory was yeah. Molly. Yeah. But Ashton feels a lot like Molly. Yeah, Ashton does feel a lot like and, and And like what happened in, in, our, in our campaign with uh, one, one of our players has a, a massive um, gap in the backstory that I just kind of fill in here and there to add um, plot points and NPCs and stuff. And so I introduced a character. We had a fun little mm. moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of thing does happen. Um, I'm most surprised uh, um, Taliesin would, would leave a hole like that. If he did, it, it was deliberate. Yeah, if he did, it was on purpose. It's, it's like Molly. Like, Molly definitely yeah. had holes in his backstory, and I feel like those were very deliberate. If there is a hole in Ashton's backstory, it is a very deliberately placed hole by Taliesin mm -hmm. so that he can see what Matt does with that. Yeah. And I could see Taliesin doing that. Yeah. Seeing like, mm, hey, here you go. It's on a platter and everything. Do mm -hmm. with it what you will. Yeah. But I am really that like that's the one thing to me that like stuck out about the whole episode mm -hmm. was this armor that Ashing was super fucking interested in like right out the get go, and that Matt said was familiar. And I I don't think like I said it could have just been Talison's face, but I don't think Talison knew that that should have been familiar to Ashton. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested in where that's gonna go because Ashton's story backstory that we know is about to end. Yeah, pretty much. What we know about Ashton, that's about to come to a conclusion. What if they until, finish until this, we get to the nobodies? Yeah, until we. Well, I mean, yeah, there's stuff with the nobodies too, but like, basically everything's been resolved. His backstory, plot point openings is that he's in debt and they can't leave until they pay uh, Gianna that yeah. money. Once they finish this. Ashton's no longer yeah, dead, their, so their story their primary is, goal yeah, their is primary done. goal is done, unless that's not their primary goal. Yeah, which I imagine they, there's, they've got a lot of things Absolutely. that they want to accomplish. Yeah, and, it's too simple. And, and they're holding it a little bit closer. Because, yeah. uh -huh. I mean, as as much as Ashton has definitely latched on to this group, because they have, they're pretending like they have, uh -huh. but they have, I think they're still really holding something pretty close. Yes, Absolutely. Which just makes me hate the nobodies even more because they fucked them over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got, we got to talk about one more thing. Chetney. Oh. With those wisdom saves and, and going feral and attacking Orem. Yeah, we finally saw the downside of choosing Lycanthrope as yeah. a, a subclass or whatever. A as, blood hunter anyway, but it, being a Lycanthrope. Be, being a Lycanthrope. Yeah. Be, be, being a, a, a cursed humanoid. Because, yeah, I mean, a lot of DMs won't let their players be lycanthropes. Um, but Matt thankfully did. Yes. I would, if any of my players yeah. got, got infected or cursed in, in that way, I would let it happen. Yeah. But there's a major downside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was really cool to see him slip below that and yeah. fail one of the wisdom throws. And especially like it's a really low after, DC. Yeah, going after Orem. Yeah. Who's the one who jumped 
down the hole to mm-hmm. save him. Like that well, was, was the just, closest one to Yeah, Chevy. it was, it was, but it was just the timing on that was just perfect mm-hmm. for storytelling. Yeah. So and that's gonna be interesting after they finish this heist and yeah, they, they go back and they yeah, they have their uh, long rest when they can go back to the tavern and fucking talk. Yeah. They're gonna have and, some shit to talk and, about. MCG seemed genuinely upset by it. Oh yeah. Like we need to talk. Bro. They were very upset. Yeah. Very, very upset. Um, I think I'm more looking forward to the role play after this. Yes. Than I am to seeing how this uh, heist ends. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the role play because there's some stuff they got to resolve. Um, Ferd really wanted to use that fishing rod. I know, poor Ferd. <laughs> I mean, there's still stuff to steal, so maybe she'll get to yeah, use it. Yeah, I hope they grab the book. I hope they get the book. I hope they get the book, too. That's the one thing I want them to take. I know. So far, Ferd's like, I'm going to take this on our way out. I'm going to take this on our way out. I'm going to take this on our way out. I'm like, Ferd, you can't steal Chris home museum. But, He's but they're notice. definitely being watched. Yeah, they're, they are. So I, I don't know if they'll be able to actually steal anything. Because yeah. that dude's definitely keeping an eye. Yeah, like, they might get the book. But I bet he takes it back when, yeah. when they turn in the... You know, and maybe they'll break back in and try to steal it. Yeah, maybe. Would I not put that past I, the hell, Bell's Hells. No, I really... No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's going to be it for uh, this video. And we will end with a quick sneak peek of our character profiles from the Taldori campaign that, I that Anna's, Anna's going to be running here sometime later this year in a few yeah, months. A couple so months. So here is that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, let us know by dropping a like on it and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.